a gentle reminder to all our participants to mute their audio, but please keep the videos on. We request our audience to post their questions, comments, reviews about, about the webinar in the chat box. We will take them after the panel discussion. Uh, good evening. I, Sneha Taishate, on behalf of the Institute of Environmental Architecture and Research, warmly welcome all our participants and our speaker, architect Swapnil Bhole, and our panelists, Dr. Himendir Bali and architect Kiran Kalamdani for today. Our Institute of Environmental Architecture and Research, which is a Mumbai-based educational research and training institute with a vision to create a sustainable environment through scientific research, education and training, social cultural understanding, community engagement and awareness. We are a multidisciplinary group of scientists, professionals and academicians who have joined forces to form this organization, having worked collaboratively for more than 15 years on education, environment consultancy, and awareness. Our mission is environment first. This is the 22nd webinar in the series, which we started during the lockdown period. So far, we have reached out to more than 6,000 participants altogether. Our main objective in this webinar series is to provide educational and research inputs and a scientific and analytical approach to environmental issues. Along with these webinars, we are conducting a few online courses, short-term courses in the coming months on scientific writing, urban and rural rainwater <laughs> harvesting, and reducing carbon footprints. Do register if you are interested in any of the short-term courses. Okay. Dr. Roshni Yehuda is the president of Institute of Environmental Architecture and Research. A practicing architect and academician, her core competency lies in energy efficient and environmental design of buildings. She has a PhD in resource management. She is a qualified master trainer and empaneled expert on the Energy Conservation Building Code of India, awarded by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in February 2015. Roshni is a co-chairperson, director, Roshni Udyavar and Associates, Asocham Jem Maharashtra chapter, an advisor of Environment and Sustainability, Science and Technological Park, Pune. She is the principal investigator for the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India's research program on developing energy efficient and ECBC compliant opaque wall assembly. She was the head of Rashana Sansas Institute of Environmental Architecture from June 2003 to July 2017, where she initiated several environmental projects in addition to a postgraduate course on environmental architecture. She has more than 20 years of academic and professional experience and has traveled widely on professional assignments to more than 20 countries. I would like to welcome and hand over to Dr. Roshni Udyawal to conduct today's session. Over to you. Thank you, Sneha. And uh, once again, a warm welcome to all our participants. Uh, as Neha has mentioned, to keep your uh, yourself on mute because that would disturb the speakers, especially. So please maintain that. Uh, so uh, good evening to all of you and welcome to this event uh, on traditional architecture of India, a case study of Himachal Pradesh. For uh, for a country like India with a, such an ancient civilization. Tradition is an intrinsic element that connects the past to the present. We have festivals, customs, rituals, dressing styles even, and architecture, which mirror the beliefs of our ancestors and represent the collective wisdom of a society, as well as its relationship to its environment. In India, we have had a rich and varied vernacular architecture, which differs from region to region, depending primarily on climate, uh, local materials available, and also socio-economic conditions and cultural traditions. From Vadas in Pune to Havelis in Rajasthan, to different types of houses, uh, you know, belonging to trading community, the warrior community and so on, we have such a wide tapestry uh, and a rich tapestry of both art and architecture, which is reflected in temples, forts, 
palaces and houses of people. These vernacular structures reflect the science that was understood over the years, a deep understanding of climate and local craftsmanship, which was specialized and nurtured over hundreds, maybe even more thousands of years. Unfortunately, these structures are fast disappearing and being replaced by cement and concrete buildings, uh, which are equipped with modern gadgets, heating and cooling systems, and materials that are not local to the place, even perhaps imported from abroad. These buildings are um, energy intensive, both in the construction phase and also during the operational life, and they have a huge carbon footprint. So what can we learn from our traditional architecture? What is their relevance in today's times? How can we preserve the wisdom of our ancestors and incorporate the best of everything in today's buildings? These and similar questions concern us. And I hope that today's presentation by architect Swapnil uh, and the following panel discussion will enlighten us in the way ahead. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce our speakers and panelists of today. Firstly, uh, we have uh, Dr. Himinder Pali. Uh, he is principal of the Government Senior Secondary School, Narkanda District, uh, Shimla, Himachal Pradesh. He has an MA in Political Science and uh, an MA in English and a PhD in History. His work has primarily been to research on the history, culture, and social life of Himachal Pradesh. And he has published numerous books, including uh, Hindi poetry Prabhash in 2006, short stories, uh, Simuta Asman in 2018, uh, Himalay Gaurav, Himachal Pradesh, Geography and History 2020, and Himalay Garima, Mandi Ka Sanskritik Vaibhav 2021. Secondly, we have um, architect Kiran Kalamdani. Uh, he's an architect and urban designer and a conservation architect, partner at Kimaya Architects since uh, 1989, urban designer, conservationist, valuer, and interior designer. He's also a consortium member of the Pilgrimage Development Group. Architect Kalamdani has completed his master's in urban design from SPA, School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi, 1987. Uh, certificate course in Structural and Chemical Conservation, Indian Institute of Archaeology, and MA uh, Institute of Advanced Architectural Studies, University of York, UK, 1989. He has been involved in a number of conservation projects, particularly the conservation and development of heritage precincts of uh, College of uh, Agriculture and heritage precinct of uh, Deccan College, Pune, and has won two major uh, awards, UNESCO Asia Pacific Award of Merit for uh, Project uh, Sri Sakhar Narvasini Mandir, Kinhai, Satara District 2014, and UNESCO Asia Pacific Honorable Mention for Sri Parvati Nandan Ganpati Mandir, Kaneshkin, Pune in 2015. So a warm welcome to both architect Kiran Kalamdani and Dr. Himender Pali. Now I will introduce our speaker of uh, today uh, who will initially present us with uh, an outline of uh, traditional architecture in Himachal Pradesh after which we will have a panel discussion. Architect Swapnil Bole is a practicing architect from Mumbai with an MR in environmental architecture from Rachna Sansat Institute of Environmental Architecture in 2007. Since completing his graduation in 2004, he has been passionately involved in research projects on traditional architecture in Himachal Pradesh and other parts of India, in addition to his mainstream architectural and interior design firm. He has been involved in heritage listing and documentation for among other organizations, the uh, Mumbai Metropolitan Regional Development Authority and has carried out independent studies on lost forts of Mumbai, heritage structures in interiors of Gujarat and Maharashtra, Buddhist gompas in the Lahul Spiti region and the Katpuni architectural systems of Himachal Pradesh. Since 2004, his research and documentation has included architectural heritage of Southeastern Himachal Pradesh, 
a pioneering project which takes into account the forts, temples, palaces, and local traditional houses, studying their indigenous earthquake resistant technology towards the creation of a database which shall eventually lead to the conservation of these heritage structures. He, along with uh, his wife and colleague uh, Neha Rajay and Mr. Kambarte, have uh, published articles on the subject uh, on Live History India website and in the Traveler Trails magazine. Uh, they have made a comp contribution in a recently released documentary, Pangana, The Last Heritage. His, art, they are, his articles have also been published in newspapers like Times of India and uh, local newspapers, mainly in Himachal. So uh, welcome to this program, Swapnil. And uh, now I uh, request you to make the presentation sure. for today. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I will just, uh, I need to share the screen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Roshni and uh, the whole team at IER for giving me this opportunity to showcase my uh, our work, which we're doing in Himachal Pradesh since 2004. Today, mainly I will be uh, discussing about uh, uh, like what is it? Uh, just giving you a gist of traditional architecture in India. Then our mission statement mainly in Himachal, introduction of uh, to Himachal Pradesh in and our area of study, along with the typology of structures which we have documented, and just giving few glimpses of the sites which we have covered apart from a couple of uh, sites which I will be discussing in detail, and one case study of Chennai uh, village and a fort which I would like to discuss. Thoroughly throughout this presentation. In short, I will be giving you a brief understanding of the Katkuni technology because it is impossible to say everything in one presentation. And from all this, what we learn have learned and what's the way forward and what is our mission ahead going ahead. So generally, when I think of India, the idea of India itself is very fascinating and intriguing to me when it comes to its architecture. I guess no other country in the world offers a variety of architecture as compared to India. Like, as I say, you name it and we have it. We have different climatic zones, like hot and humid, hot and arid, hot and cold, cold and dry, composite. We have, stru we have structures ranging from like uh, bamboo structures, from havelis to courtyard houses of Goa, to slope mangalore tile uh, buildings in Konkan and South India, to the houses in Gujarat. So we have a lot of variety overall if we study India in different climatic zones. Generally, 70% of India still lives in villages, which, what does it mean? It means that every village has its own character and, and local materials and geographical context to it. Hence, we find in abundance uh, variations of traditional architecture in any part of India we go. So generally, I would like to describe a couple of things, like uh, suppose if we consider hot and humid climate, we see houses built around courtyards, which have heavy reinforcements of mangrove and sloping roof. Corridors are, uh, the buildings are covered by external and internal corridors to protect, <coughs> sorry, to, to protect the structures from the he heavy rainfall. Mainly local stone and wood is used as, con as construction material. When you come to hot and heat climate like Rajasthan, you can see jarokhas, jalis for air circulation and to cut off the direct harsh sunlight. Thick walls to prevent the loss and gain of heat. High ceilings allows better ventilation. Windows with ventilators uh, allows light to filter in. Uh, and so mainly in Rajasthan stone is used at, as it's locally available material. If you consider cold and dry climate of Lahul Spiti or Leh Ladakh, then houses are built by locally available mud. Walls, uh, wall, there are thick walls and thick roofs which prevents the loss, heat loss and heat gain. Small, uh, mainly the facades, since they have an extreme cool climate, the facade mainly face uh, on the south side to gain the maximum sunlight. Low ceilings prevent the heat loss. So these are, like, if we consider India, we can keep talking on every part of our country. So, the, uh, like, hence the traditional architecture, it has its own character to every place. So what, this is a general definition of a traditional vernacular architecture. Generally, uh, it means 
Uh, architecture which usually serves image at local needs, it is constrained by the materials available in its particular region and reflects the local traditions and cultural practices. All these buildings were designed and built by local craftsmen who were rarely given any attribution for their work. The difference between, uh, like if you see all, <coughs> sorry, all the most of the traditional buildings, they have been built, uh, they have been built by the local masons, craftsmen who have been traditionally ill worn since generations uh, uh, in building them. Now, particularly, I will come down straight to my area of study, which is Himachal Pradesh. So far, we have traveled more than 15,000 kilometers in the Himalayan Highlands. In 18 years, we have covered more than 15 field trips and have spread across four districts of Simla, Kulumanali, Kinnor, and uh, Mandi. From we can uh, we have covered around 39 sites, which includes majestic forts, royal uh, majestic temples, royal forts, and residential dwellings. So, what is our like our mission behind all this study was to research, document, and conserve this unique traditional architectural heritage and indigenous consequent technology of southeastern Himachal Pradesh. This architectural legacy stands today as a timeless expression of spirit, skill, and craftsmanship or of our East master mission. So why we chose basically Himachal? As you can see, Himachal is known like Christine as Dev Bhumi. Himachal Pradesh forms a very interesting mosaic of religious beliefs, social cultural uh, customs, superstitions, folklore, and region details. Till date, a very limited exposure and interaction with the outside world has ensured that in certain parts of the state, the original customs and lifestyle remain still intact. Uh, mainly, Himachal can be divided into three zones, depending upon its geoclimatic conditions and architectural response. The western region, which uh, consists of Chamba, Kangra uh, districts, uh, uh, has a style uh, generally mixed style with rock cut and stone architecture. The northeastern part of the Himachal generally has, which is towards Lahul Spiti and upper areas of Kinnor, is completely uh, done, done with mud architecture with gumphals. And our area of study, which is the mainly the central and southeastern part, which comprises of buildings and structures which are built through by stone and wood. And <coughs> this is our primary area of study. So when I talk about Southeastern Himachal, there are predominant two technologies. One is Katkuni and one is Dolmeli. This region has become synonymous with this indigenous traditional concern technology. This technology manifests itself into residential dwellings and the community structures, but it's best exemplified in the monuments such as temples and forts. So what are the basic factors affecting architecture in Himachal? One of uh, the basic factors are climate, terrain, and seismic zones, local material and accessibility. Heavy snow, when you talk about climate, heavy snowfall and extreme cold in winters to moderate summers to heavy rainfall in certain areas. So you have everything in Himachal. Uh, the terrain is very difficult as you go towards the higher Himalayan side. Uh, practically whole of Himachal, Himachal lies on a uh, fault line traversing to the state, making it highly susceptible to earthquakes. And it lies in earthquake zone four and five. The local materials which are available for construction are devdar, chale, slate, stone, mud, etc. To certain areas, the accessibility is very less due to difficult terrain. And the area which I will be talking about, which predominantly is a southeast, known as southeastern Himachal, has a very road, less road network. So the whole of architecture of Imagine Pradesh is derived from all above factors. The best part is that the, the, tech, the technology which we will be discussing about the Kartuni, you can see it not only in the houses, but in forts, palaces, as well as in temples. So, so introduction, like now I will take uh, like share two examples of tower temples. Uh, today, the formidable identity of any village of this region are its temples, which forms a very interesting typology to study. Uh, placing an idol at the topmost level of the storage edifices is a very unique feature of the tower temples. <laughs> this, uh, the first temple which I will be discussing is the temple of Ma Bhima Kali. 
dedicated to Bhaja goddess Mahavira Kamali. It is located in village of Sarahan in district Simla. This sprawling temple complex is spread over three courtyards, finally culminating into two splendid towers, which houses the idol on the topmost level. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, in, uh, courtyard, this is the first courtyard where one enters. From there, you enter the second courtyard, and this is the third courtyard, and these are the two towers. A pair of gateways leads to the second courtyard and then to the third, which, have, which is at the highest level. This is an on-site sketch which we had made during that time. So here you enter, then this is a pa palace premises, and these are the two towers. As you can see in this, the photograph on the left is the original temple as it was in 2006. And I think around 2013 and <coughs> 14, they restored the tower on the left. You can see they have added an additional extension to the balcony, which originally was not there. But the best part is that this restoration has been done locally without any guidance from any outside people, person or a professional. These are some beautifully carved windows, brackets, jhalas, and tribal motifs, which you can find in abundance when you move around this temple premises. This is probably, this temple belongs to the family of the uh, ex uh, late Chief Minister Bhir Badri Singh Ji. And uh, it's one of, the temple is very royal in its appearance. Uh, these are on-site drawings. Moving on to the second. So this is one temple topology where you can see twin towers. Now coming down to temple, which is a single tower. So this is a temple situated in Mandal, Pujarli. Deep within the interiors of Simla, a Jubal Tehsil. As you can see, it is flanked by the Bandar or Rasoigar on the either side. And generally, the temple sits on the edge of the cliff on a square, which is used by uh, on the square in the front of the temple is used as a gathering space during the various religious activities and cultural programs. Surrounded by colonnade on the ground and first level, the same is reflected in the form of balcony at the higher level where the idol is placed. The uh, temple and mandir enjoys the highest position in the village. If you can see, there is a valley immediately adjoining the temple, sitting precariously on the edge of it. It enjoys the endless view of the valleys below. The roof is an interesting composition of multi-level sloping roof, cladded with locally available grey slate stone and finished with a golden kalsha on top. This weather beaten structure is very rich in its decorative wooden carvings and jhalas with corner bells. These are some of our drawings on, on site work, which we have translated, which we have documented. This is a temple which is basically uh, at Bachu. Rather than temple, it is also known as a bhandar. Bhandar means a storage a place for the devatas. So these are, these, I will just go, go through it. These are its plans. You can see the balcony details. Here you can, the, the one of the unique features, now this is the third temple which I am showing and you must have seen in all the previous two temples also, these jalos and the corner bills, uh, you must have seen. So when the wind blows, it, they basically uh, create a very soothing humming sound, which totally changes the atmosphere in, uh, when you are standing in, in the premises. Now coming back to four, now coming to the forts. Once the citadels of former princely states of Himachal, this structure is today stand as silent sentinels of those glorious days. Most of the forts have been neglected in Himachal, unfortunately. They were in vogue in almost each and every Oswal kingdom for defense as well as to store the riches. They were formidable structures against any attack and would not yield easily to the enemy. As you can see, the first example which we'll be discussing is the fort of Fort Kai. This court Khai means a court means a fort and Khai means valley. So this fort is situated in, <coughs> in the valley. This massive fort is a farm, former Rana of Fort Kai, stands today on a rocky spur surrounded by gorges on three sides. And it is connected to a very mainland by thin mass of land, which you can see over here. Generally, uh, this fort, uh, the whole fort is made by the predominant construction typology is dhol medi and the entire structure very intelligently stands on a very high raised plinth this is a view from <coughs> from the main road 
as and this is this is where one enters the fort which is the lowest level and as soon as you walk the steps inside this is where you come up these are the two uh, these are the two courtyards uh, two central courtyards in the fort the lower one generally houses the cows and uh, the goats and as you come up towards then it has an habitable portion uh, one of the rooms in the court in the fort has a very decorative timber carved ceiling panels which depicts the life of lord krishna this is one of the last halls where these beautiful uh, carved columns doors and ceiling panels have still been in, intact but unfortunately this image which uh, is on slide is taken in around 2008 but when we visited in uh, around 2012 last time uh, they have painted this now coming down to the domestic architecture the traditional um, construction technique so Abhinil, uh, could, could, yeah. could you just uh, hold on for a minute yeah i will uh, try to share the screen okay and probably uh, get the powerpoint working so uh, shall i stop to... sharing my screen yeah please do that <coughs> Okay. Uh, Can you see this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Am I on the right slide? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just bus, 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 bus. One slide, right? Next slide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just say next, and I'll proceed. Sure, with. sure. Thank you. Uh, right. Now coming down to the domestic local architecture, the traditional construction technology and its response to the local material and conditions that clearly reflected in the lo uh, local architecture. Walls are constructed in Katkuni and rooms mostly conform to a rectangular model plans. In certain cases, the external walls are finished using mud plaster or a smoother finish. Next. Next. Uh, this is a traditional local village standing on uh, next a any village in imagine if you see the section of this village next slide please if you see this it follows the contour profile back back yeah if you see this this is a typical typical layout of any local village anywhere in imagine they just follow the contours they they will not do any unnecessary cutting or filling Rather, they just follow the contour, and as you can see, the tower temple in the center sits uh, on a very prominent position where it can be seen from where the whole village and the valley can be seen. Uh, generally, the temples initially, in most cases, were forts. Next, please. Now, coming down to any local house, generally, as I said, they follow the contours. So, the the here you can see one ground level which we have shown. Uh, uh, which is the lowest level. This is a Yudhishthir house in one of the village. The house is basically constructed in two or three levels. The lowermost level is used for the cattle, and the first uh, the first floor is used for the family. Uh, generally, if you see the section, the level one where the cattle is placed, then there's level two, level three, and the topmost level where they have the chulagar. So, what happens is. Uh, because there is a cold, uh, 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 the climate is cold. The heat, uh, the heat generated from the animals as well as from the uh, uh, the kitchen above gets trapped and just helps the levels in between levels, like where level two and level three, where the habitable portion is. To, uh, it helps him, them to keep it warmer. I mean, the, as you can see, the cantilever balconies are also here, which uh, uh, the people allow to, to gain the sunlight. Next, please. Uh, if you see the typical section, now this is an actual photo where the extreme the photo on the left where you can see the cattle shed the, on the ground level, then first and second level is for uh, people to stay. And the right image which you see is of a, uh, the balcony, the cantilever balcony, which is a very unique feature of the Himalayan houses. These external continual balconies are used as work, uh, work uh, used uh, for working and as well as interactive spaces, mainly which are which faces east and south. And the, what happens is generally during uh, uh, the daytime, people, if you can see the photos, 
two. You can see two houses, two women are sitting, one in the balcony and one in the window. Really, they come in, they have a chat while working, and that is how the whole interaction takes place. And generally during winter, when it's extreme cold, they burn the chula on top and people gather on the topmost level of their houses. Next, please. Next. These are some internal shots. Next, please. A very unique feature which uh, one will find in local architecture is a common grain, a village grain storage. Every village has a common storage facility, uh, which they use for uh, storing of the harvested grains and other essential items. Because sometimes in certain areas of Himachal, uh, th these areas are cut off for almost four to six months in a year. So that is the time where uh, the, these, uh, uh, these uh, storage spaces come into its uh, utilization. Next, please. Next. So now I will just go I'll give you glimpses of the few sites. This is uh, one of the fort in uh, uh, Kinnor, uh, Fort Kamru. Next. Next, just run to this is a fort of Dharkoti, which unfortunately has been now burned down due to fire. So nothing remains. Next, please. This is a, a Gugirani Palace and Fort Sapni in another uh, majestic fort in Kinnor. Next. This, the one on the left, is Fort of uh, Gonlal in Lahul. I think this is the only fort uh, which is, or the only building which is made by wood and stone in Lahul region. Otherwise, most of the buildings are uh, in mud and stone. The one on the right is a Fort of Pangna, which is almost 1200 years old. And I think it is one of the oldest remaining Fort of Himachal. Next, please. This is, a, uh, this is a recently restored fort of Labrang in Kinnor district again. Next, please. These are the, uh, this is the Twin Towers and Temple Complex of Vijayadipta Mandir in Sarahan, which is in Lower Sarahan. Next, please. This is a temple of Thainag Devta Harwani in Rodu district of Simla. Next. This is Pujali 4 in again in Roru. Next. So now, uh, till now, what you have seen uh, is a very traditional indigenous architecture of Himachal when it comes to its houses, forts, temples, or palaces. Now, what is happening? Now, a lot of insensitive development has started taking place. Next. So, as you can see, the original temple, uh, this is Pujali 7. Original temple, into, uh, which is on right, uh, was in 2007, has been demolished and they have come up with this newly built temple last year, uh, as, we, uh, as seen in 2019. Yes, it is built in stone, it is built in wood, but uh, somewhere they have applied uh, cement mortar to it, they have changed the shape of the structure, don't know why, they have their own reasons. Next, please. This, as I said, this is a fort of Dharkoti, which is now burned completely. So there is nothing remains. Next, please. You can see the original temple. This is a temple of Mandal, which I discussed earlier. The photo taken in 2005, the photo on the right, which they have reconstructed it in 2019. But unfortunately, they think they have done it in, in its traditional Katkuni style, but it's not. It has been done in RCC and just cladded by wooden stone. Next. You can see the fort of Kamru. Originally, there was hardly any uh, insensitive development surrounding the temple called the fort premises. But as you can see, the latest fort, a lot of houses have started coming up. Next, please. So what is happening right now in Imachal? It is a very typical case. Generally, uh, the Katkuni, uh, uh, in Katkuni, the original Katkuni construction used to be in wood and stone without mortar. Roughly, dress stones were used. Uh, it allowed uh, the system used to uh, they allowed structures to vibrate. Exposed to wooden stone uh, was enhancing the raw architecture of the building. The carvings originally originally were of animal gods like snake and 
elephants. And what are the modern adaptations? What they have started doing is wood and stone, they have started placing with mortar. Perfectly steel breast stone have uh, reduced its friction. Then they have started making structures very rigid instead of being uh, flexible. Now, uh, considering to be modern, they have started painting wood as you make it, it increases its life. And original carvings have been replaced by the modern gods like Shiva, Krishna, Ganpati, etc. So this what has happened because of all these things is the spirit of the place is also lost, and we have also we are also losing its technological brilliance at a very brisk pace. Next, please. Next. <coughs> so here I would be discussing a case study of a Chennikoti, which we are trying to develop it as a heritage village through community participation. Next, please. So this uh, fort, the towering fort, is located in village Chenni, in district Kulu, Tehsil Banja, situated in a very picturesque Gibi Valley. It is at a distance of around 160 kilometers from Simla. Till date, there is no road which reaches to this village. Last month when we were there, they, uh, the last four months they have started preparing uh, a road, which I think within a month or two will reach this place now. Otherwise, till now, what happens is everybody till now everybody had to walk around forty-five minutes or an hour to reach to this village from a certain point. It, the whole village is surrounded by a very eco-sensitive Devdar forest. Uh, uh, according to the Balukis, the fort was built by seven uh, in seventeen. Century by King Dad. Uh, Dad. Next, please. So, the why we decided to uh, conserve this in the first place because this towering edifice, as you can see, this towering edifice is overlooking the hills of Kulu region and it is one of the tallest tower temples of not only southeastern Himachal but of entire Himalayan region. It was once used as a defense structure but now serves as a temple. This a raw architecture exposed, exposes Katkuni technology of tying the corners and weaving the external skin into continuous structural network, allowing it to withstand the dangerous earthquake forces. Next, please. So, what we have done till now on this, like from 2004 to 18, we conducted multiple site visits. We took a lot of interviews with the locals with regards to like we started asking them questions about how important the structure was them to Indian daily life. Do they value its heritage? Do they want it to be conserved? So a lot of meetings uh, went into this. We conducted meetings with panchayat, temple committees. Then finally, after 14 years, uh, communities from five different valleys agreed to come together to save this iconic structure in 2018. Within a year, a fort restoration and protection committee was formed. Sarahan Bichirar's sister firm was appointed as architect. We were appointed as architects for doing documentation and conservation of the work. Until and so far, uh, we have completed and submitted the documentation. Because of COVID, uh, the next process has been taken a little uh, pause. But the best part was local scheme. Uh, next, please. As you can see in the next slide. We, uh, around 2,500 local people gathered for one of our meetings in 2019, along with the 30-member people committee. So how uh, there's a very interesting uh, uh, story to this. How does get one permission in Himachal to do any work? The first and the foremost permission we need to take is to get is from the local deity or from the devta. So, after when they decided to uh, go ahead with this process, first of a uh, first a religious ceremony was held with the consent of Devta, where the first stage was to ask him, he shall we go ahead with the restoration and uh, first the documentation of the work and then for the restoration. So when Devta ji gave permission, another permission was take, uh, taken from Devta ji was about shall Sarahan be appointed as architects to do the restoration and documentation work. Again, fortunately for us, the Taji gave us permission to, uh, to go ahead, to give us green signal to go ahead with that. And finally, uh, after all these multiple processes, the local villagers gave us the permission along with, next please, along with the signed letters from the Panchayat and Temple Committee to go ahead with. So these are the, these letters. So next. 
this is the committee which they formed. <coughs> Next, please. And these are some of the uh, drawings which you have submitted to them. Next. Next. So now coming to the core part of the whole presentation is what is the whole science of cartoon technology? I will try to brief it in a couple of slides. Next, please. So cartoon means what? Cartoon means the simple meaning is wooden corners at right angles. It's like or cartoon, like this of our hand. So as uh, Himachal Pradesh lies in seismic zone four and five, and it is faced with extreme climatic conditions and steep terrains. This technique boasts of some remarkable earthquake features, which have transcended time and are comparable to emerging principles of theories of modern technological advances. It, it utilizes locally available materials, such as Devdar and local stone, to its optimum advantage, adapting this system to see, suit their simple lifestyle and space requirements. Ancient master machines have developed this conventional technology as an appropriate response to the above factors. This technology needs to be analyzed and documented in detail. This, uh, the Kartuni technology has been transferred to hereditary institutions and community participation, as, and it is still being employed for local construction with some modification, but the principle and its concepts remains the same. Next. Uh, but the amazing fact, uh, amazing thing of this technology is, it is very cleverly reflected in all the aspects of the building, from the foundation to the walls, to the door openings, window openings, to the roof, Make, hence bringing its earthquake creation efficiency in micro behavior of the building structural system. It will be very difficult for me to explain in detail. It will totally require a different uh, lecture for it. But I will try to simplify as much as possible and make you understand, everyone understand in the next couple of slides in a very simpler form. What is the whole science of this cat technology is? Next, please. So as, I, as you can see, the chart on the left, it's a traditional uh, architecture, which has, like, which has been seen in a simple dwelling as well as in forts and religious structures. Uh, how it how the whole system transcends down to the building of the whole structure, like where family participation takes place. Like when you are doing a simple dwelling, what is the process? One is the social. One, the first thing to understand is the social economic condition of a family in a village. Then, the uh, the, uh, the family participation takes place and resulting into. Uh, and when it comes to the build uh, uh, public buildings, all the village community uh, people will come in community participation <coughs> will take place, resulting into these buildings. You can see the image on the right of a master mason who is working on one temple site. Next, please. So now I will try to explain the whole, uh, technology in a very simple diagrammatic form. As you can see, the first uh, one on the left top. Here, you have seen, you have gone to now, you have seen a couple of buildings in the previous slides. You can see through this image, the image on the left, which is a very generally what we do in modern, uh, generally what we do nowadays is we have a, a certain set of norms set for a build, like a building, like, okay, play, even though building is so, so low, so much close high, we'll have a, this much of plane, this much height minimum is required and all those stuff. But if you see this here, the people, our master masons, our ancestors had cleverly uh, derived the height of plane. They had cleverly changed the height in Increase the height of plane depending upon the height of the structure. So why? Because the more higher you, uh, more higher the plane, lesser it tilts. Secondly, uh, the image on the right, you can see it's the center of gravity. Everybody in our childhood must have seen a doll which we used to punch, which never used to fall apart. It's the same technology which they have used in these buildings. Lowering the center of the, they, they, they never had a center. All the structures will never have center of gravity exactly in the center. They always lowered it according to the height and the ratio, hence controlling the sway and adding the stability uh, to the building. Uh, the image on the green, in the green, which you can see is, they, as I said, they increase the ground line. So 
when they increase the ground like generally uh, when i said earlier that uh, the main technologies used in himachal uh, in southeastern himachal in wooden stone architecture is dolmadi and cartoon so the dolmadi style is generally used for the plinth level and the cartoony variations the cartoony uh, technology starts from the habitable portions here you can see the, in the image the plinth where uh, the generally plinth is made of uh, rough stone with just they are just placed <coughs> one above the other and in between they are tied with huge timber logs sleeper beams which generally absorbs the stress when, uh, and pressure when the earthquake hits on the ground line thus by the time the force reaches its superstructure it is very much dissipated uh, uh, as you see the image on the right uh, below the team uh, uh, the superstructure is woven together with wood and uh, uh, with wooden beams tied at the right uh, corners it basically forms a square grid box but those corners are allowed uh, have elasticity pro they provide elasticity and they are allowed to vibrate instead of being rigid so uh, if a force hits from a particular direction by the time it comes Um, uh, by the time it passes to the high plinth and it reaches the superstructure, it uh, the for uh, the intensity of the force is reduced more, mainly more than fifty percent of it. And by the time it reaches superstructure, the structures just vibrate a little bit and they they move a little bit, they shake a little bit. But since they are tightly woven with one another, they don't leave uh, apart the building. That is how the building sways and regains its original position. Uh, during the course of the earthquake next please so here are some of the sketches which uh, you can see uh, you can see the image on the, the first sketch on the left top where the grid network is shown how, how the beams are how, how the sleeper beams are tied with the key pegs and uh, tongue and groove joints in the section as well as in the iso matrix you can see the uh, the movement of the beams uh, movement of the structure when it happens where the hinge joints at the corners allow the lateral movement and how the corners which are tied avoids uh, them for splitting so the whole logic behind the whole construction technology or the science of cartooning is rather than making those structures rigid they allow the whole structure to vibrate with the earthquake just um, um, thus by reducing or uh, thus by preventing them from falling apart next please so all the generally all the uh, all the structures which you have seen in my presentation today those are more mainly <clears throat> most of the structures are more than 400 500 years old some as i said like for pangna is around 1200 years old chaini koti is around 800 years old so uh, all these things led us to very imp few important questions like when we started doing it like Whose heritage is it? Is it how we can preserve it? What? How we can ensure the fair access to it? What is the way forward? And what is the importance of document? Why we? Uh, what is the importance of documenting it? Next, please. So the whole thing. So now what we are in the now what we generally do is we uh, we are trying to we go back to the villages. We try to create awareness among people. We try to uh, ask them those particular questions. we try to conduct periodic meetings with the villagers this all these things we have not been assigned by any institute or any government organization or anybody this we are doing on our own as a passion project because what we truly believe me we, are, we in our team what we truly believe is that if we don't take right steps at right time then slowly everything is going to get lost next please so for ensuring this fair access what uh, so what we need like when i talk, when i say so we need to make them understand that heritage is not a taboo but it's a very it's a it's a positive thing and a long term gain so we try to involve locals the best way to prevent our heritage from getting lost is to involve locals make them understand its importance we need to work with the communities and and to gain their trust because once you get all once you are able to go through all these processes i i, I guarantee that they are also local people are also willing to uh, restore their heritage 
but yes it's a very difficult process it may sound easy while i'm talking but it takes years and years to gain that trust next please so what have we, we have learned from our ancestors like way forward is that we need to learn from these buildings we need to adopt sustainable techniques we need to adopt eco sensitive and energy efficient materials which are locally available building should in, uh, include as many as natural and low cost uh, building should be built by as many as natural and low cost space as possible to this uh, so with this drastic rise in urbanization our indian cities have turned into concrete jungles that are highly unsustainable we as architects and urban planners and engineers need to go back to the uh, drawing board and the history books to take the lessons of how to design green buildings and create sustainable cities in future next We truly believe that heritage is a thread that keeps us connected with our past. Many times, or most of times, these features are more or less redundant functionally. But they talk about our lifestyle, culture, how we lived in the past, and without any comprehensive understanding, it will be very difficult to perceive our future. Consequently, it also paves the path towards our future. Thus, heritage is evidently heritage becomes an evident link between. present and the future next please so during this work uh, what keeps us going even after facing so many difficulties is for the what uh, because we uh, our work has been next please just run through those couple of slides uh, i come to them like we have been appreciated by people like so maktali sadashiv gorakshikar next please firoza godrej mr sayas gazdar next please and some of the people who have supported us some in uh, in monetary base some in uh, supporting guiding us being mentors into our last so many years like uh, uh, martin singh ji of inta <coughs> pratavadit pipal shirish patel who has introduced us oc handa and malins from uh, himachal giri joshi from pune and next please so now uh, these are a couple of workshops we had, which we have conducted and we had been invited to give lectures in uh, uh, lectures in sir bernard field in lecture series and a couple of places next please and I, i would like to end by saying that this is what every village of india says like har ghar kuch kehta hai har gaon has some kind of a story or kahani so let's come together and इसी ग्रामीण कला संस्कृति जीवन को बचाने की कोशिश करें नेक्स्ट प्लीज थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू स्वप्निल फॉर दैट एक्सेलेंट प्रेजेंटेशन टेकिंग अस थ्रू द हिमाचल आर्किटेक्चर आई ऑलमोस्ट फेल्ट लाइक माय विजिट बैक इन अक्टूबर व्हेन यू शोड अस सम ऑफ दीस स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड आई हैड द um you know good fortune to actually see cheni koti and pangana fort and it was amazing and uh, once you are in these structures you almost feel like you are in, you are a part of history <coughs> a part of something so uh, old and so it's so traditional and so indian so it's amazing uh, journey you. that you have taken us through and also the amount of work you have done and i must say that uh, despite not being too well you had agreed to speak i could see that you took some effort to speak but uh, thank you very much for all that um, so going ahead let's uh, start with our panel discussion there are some uh, pertinent questions by dr binumol which i will be taking up uh, and i would also like to acknowledge here uh, the presence of uh, mr tarun shridhar who was formerly additional secretary of uh, himachal pradesh government uh, welcome sir to the program and uh, we'll surely uh, take you uh, if you have to say something please put on your video and you can join the uh, panel discussion as we go ahead uh, but uh, uh, yes mr shridhar is here yes sir yes so <clears throat> so you are on mute Oh, sir! Thank you so much. I just have to join us, join another seminar at five thirty, so I'll just be muting myself at that time for some time. 
Okay, sir. Sir, would you like to say something? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad because this, uh, I've worked all my life in Himachal. I was born there. And when I was uh, listening to Sapneel, when he mentioned that chisel stone versus the rough cut stone, I very recently renovated a centuries old uh, temple on my own orchard land. I remember I was very happy with using chisel stone. <laughs> I, I really wish I had heard Sapneel before that and I could have looked for some rough cut stone. But unfortunately, you don't have the artisans who can actually really manage that kind of dry masonry with no mortar, nothing, just wood, wood and, wood and uh, rough stone. Amazing. I was very happy. And I can see Dr. Himendra Bali, my dear friend, is there. So I'm very glad I joined you. It's, it's, it's a great value addition. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So uh, as uh, Dr. Himendra Bali is also here, he's one of the panelists, sir. Um, Himachal ko dev bhoomi ka jata hai. Hum to aap gaye te to we were just enchanted with the kind of uh, uh, you know spiritualism that people have. They have some <coughs> innate beliefs. There is a village system. There is a lot of social and cultural aspects which influence the architecture. Uh, so uh, what kind of uh, influence has this social cultural aspects played on the architectural styles? And has it changed today? Has it, uh, I mean, is it uh, changing because of the modern technologies or the fact that people are moving out? And what has changed and how is it getting affected? Uh, Madam, when we uh, go to the earlier society of uh, Himachal Pradesh, especially, uh, community work was the hallmark of uh, our society. Uh, that is why all the community works uh, were done. Uh, uh, suppose one say uh, house is built and the community as a whole is used to be engaged in the work. Or I think that this is the reason why our Sanskriti was a very important thing to do in our Sanskriti. It was a very important thing to do in our Sanskriti. And this is why we हमारे हिमाचल की जो इंडिजिनस जो स्टाइल चाहे भवनों का था अपने घरों का था तो उसमें सारी कम्युनिटी उसमें जुड़ जाती थी और सबसे बड़ी बात ये थी कि हमारी कम्युनिटी में एक ऐसा तबका था एक ऐसी क्लास थी जिसको हम कहते हैं हिमाचल में जो वुड और स्टोन का वर्क करते हैं थामी लोग हैं तरखान लोग हैं तो वो स्पेशली इस काम में एक्सपर्टीज थी उनकी एंड दे एक्सेल्ड इन दिस वर्क एंड एज एंड मेन the construction of a house uh, is to be undertaken. So, in logon ki jo services hain, wo, wo li jati thi. Aur isme kuch log jo hain, patha ke kam ke mahir hote the, kuch log uh, lakdi ke kam ke mahir hote the. To is tarah se puri ek community mein ek aisi class thi, ek occupational class isko humke. Sir, you're mute. Sir, is mute. Uh, Dr. Bali, you have you are on mute. Right. Dr. Bali, this is our class who excelled in uh, wood and uh, stone work. So, both he were professional and or his career ko karte the. Chahe wo kaat kuni ke magano ki baat hum karte hain. या चाहे हम ऑर्नामेंटल वर्क की वुड वर्क की हम बात करते हैं उसके ऊपर करते हैं या पत्थरों के ऊपर जो जो कार्विंग करी करी गई है हमारे मंदिरों में बड़ी बेजोड़ है उस प्रकार तो मैं समझता हूं कि जो हमारे हम कह सकते हैं यहां की जो जो खस शैली है जिसको अभी सप्तन भोले जी ने बात करी थी कि हमारे जो काट कुनी के जितने भी मकान बने हैं वो पेंट रूफ्ड हैं गेबल्ड और पेंट रूफ्ड ही है उन उसके हमें खस शैली कहते हैं उस शैली में काठ कोनी जो है एक दीवारों की जो उसकी संरचना है वो काठ कोनी की उसमें जो है वो एक सिस्मिकली भी उसमें रेजिस्टेंस रहता ही है तो उस वक्त जो काम करने की जो प्रणाली थी कम्युनिटी वर्क था एक मकान किसी का तैयार करना है उसमें जो है पूरी कम्युनिटी उसमें एक बिरादरी उसमें जुड़ जाती थी पर आज के परिप्रेक्ष्य में जहां कंक्रीट के जंगल खड़े हो रहे हैं लास्ट में इसको कंक्लूड सपन भोले जी ने किया कि ये इसलिए हो रहे हैं कि आज एक कम्युनिटी जो एक स्पिरिट है कम्युनिटी वर्क करने का स्पिरिट है वो लगभग जो है दैट हैज रीच्ड एट इट्स लोएस्ट एप पहुंच चुका है और इसीलिए सारा का सारा जो कार्य है इंपोर्टेड जो मटेरियल है वो बाहर से आ रहा है और दूसरा ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा 
रहा है कि उस वक्त जो हमारे संसाधन थे चाहे हम लकड़ी की बात करते हैं बहुत बड़े जंगल यहाँ पर थे तो इसीलिए लकड़ी का काटकुनी के मकानों में जो है वो ज्यादा प्रयोग हुआ है चाहे वुड वर्क के अंदर की बात करें या यहाँ तक की छत की हम बात करते हैं छत भी लकड़ी की हुआ करते थे तो वो शायद आज जंगल हमारे कट चुके हैं परंतु मैं समझता हूँ तो जब हमारे यहाँ पर वो मकान चाहे मंदिर बने यहाँ पर वुडन टेंपल्स बने हैं वो आज भी सिंह है मुझे लगता है कि आज वो अगर मकान नहीं बन रहे हैं तो हमारे में एक सहकारिता की जो भावना है वो कम है और दूसरा शायद ये कारण भी रहा है कि हम में एक अपने हेरिटेज के प्रति जो है एक अनुराग भी रहा है अवर अटैचमेंट अवर इमोशनल अटैचमेंट टू टू अवर हेरिटेज इज मिसिंग क्योंकि जिस तरह से हमारा हम अपने कल्चर से अपने इतिहास से हम कट ऑफ होते जा रहे हैं और इन मकानों की वुडन जो टेम्पल्स हैं चाहे बिल्डिंग्स हैं इनकी जो एक इम्पोर्टेंस है उसको हम भूलते जा रहे हैं एक इशू में और जोड़ना चाहूंगा इसमें जितने हमारे जो काठकुनी के मकानों की हम बात करते हैं तो इन मकानों का एक ये जो काठकुनी की जो दीवारें होती है एक इंसु, इंसुलेट इंसुलेट इंसुलेटर का काम करती है इसको अंदर का जो टेम्परेचर है बाहर सवियर अगर कोल्ड भी रहता है चल रहता वो उसके अंदर के टेम्परेचर को अफेक्ट नहीं करता और गर्मी में भी ये अंदर का जो जो टेम्परेचर है वो बाहर की गर्मी जो स्कॉर्चिंग हीट होता है उस अंदर को इफेक्ट नहीं करता इसलिए इंसुलर का काम भी आपके काठकुनी के मकान करते हैं और आज तो ये एक यहाँ पर एक प्रवृत्ति चल पड़ी है कि जो पुराने मकान हैं उन लोगों का जो है स्टोर हाउस के रूप में काम किया जाता है या कौशल के रूप में वो अबेंडोन्ड है आज की डेट में जबकि अगर इसकी तरफ अगर ध्यान दिया जाए तो आज हमारा जो यहाँ के जो हेरिटेज है वो वो सस्टेन भी होगा रिवाइव भी होगा और टूरिज्म के इम्पोर्टेंस जो है यहाँ पर बहुत ज्यादा बढ़ेंगी ही और हमारी इकोनॉमी जो है वो भी एक उसमें बोएंसी आएगी उसमें मैं समझता हूँ कि हमारे जो यहाँ पर एक इतिहास और संस्कृति से जो हमारा जो कट ऑफ हम अलग हो चुके हैं इस वजह से भी आज इस तरह की हमारी जो पुरानी धरोहर जो एक वास्तुशिल्प है उसके प्रति हमारी अनदेखी उपेक्षा जो है इसका शायद सबसे बड़ा रीजन रहा आपने बहुत ही एक बात या समराइज़ डॉक्टर पाली ने जो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट बात कही है कि कम्युनिटी वर्क जो लोग साथ में किया करते थे जो घरे हैं जो उनके स्किल्स ईच अदर को कॉम्प्लीमेंट करते हुए जो करते थे वो शायद आज के जमाने में नहीं हो पा रहा है मतलब कि यू हैव अ कॉन्ट्रैक्टर हु कम्स एंड बिल्ड्स यू नो हम लोग बहुत सारे ऐसे रिमोट विलेजेस में भी गए जहाँ पर हमने देखा कि कंक्रीट के ब्लॉक्स आ चुके हैं और इनसे मकाने बन रही हैं आई एम श्योर कि ये डेफिनेटली एनर्जी एफिशिएंट या थर्मली कम्फर्टेबल नहीं होंगे एज कम्पेयर टू दीज ओल्ड स्ट्रक्चर्स so that's a very important point that uh, how to bring the community back again which is again dissipating yes swapnil you would like to add yeah yeah main isme add karna chahunga sir ne jo baat ki ki abhi there are couple of problems one is the policy also jo government ki policy hai pehle tdr matlab bombay mein tdr ka matlab alag hai aur himachal ka tdr ka matlab alag hai himachal mein jisko tdr ko timber distribution rights bolte hai तो पहले पहले लाइक वेन आई स्टार्टेड वर्क इन 2004 2005 तभी पॉलिसी होती थी कि बाहर पांच साल में एक पेड़ दिया जाता था लोगों घर लोगों को तो लोग एक दस बीस साल तक पेड़ बचा के एंड देवधर गिरा हुआ देवधर ट्री मिलता था उनको सो यू मस्ट हैव सीन कि देवधर इज अज ट्री तो जब आप चार पांच पेड़ आपके अगर बीस साल में रह जाते हैं स्टोर करते हो आप तो उसके बाद अभी उसको लकड़ी को यूज करके आप घर बनाते थे जो कम्युनिटी पार्टिसिपेशन चीज जो डॉक्टर जी ने बात की अब पॉलिसी चेंज होके दस साल के ऊपर आ गई बिकॉज अगेन ऑफ डिफॉरेस्टेशन एंड एवरीथिंग बट इससे भी ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम ये है कि आज अगर ऑफिशियली भी पेड़ चाहिए किसी को अगर मुझे बनवाना भी है एज अ लोकल मेरे पास पैसे सब करना है लेकिन टू गेट द परमिशन एंड ऑफिशियली मेरे हाथ में पेड़ आने के जो छह महीने की प्रोसेस लगती है गवर्नमेंट की क्योंकि पहले डी uh, वो कोई फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट को अप्लाई करो फिर डीएफओ करेगा फिर गवर्नमेंट के पास आएगा वो सारे जो अप्रोवेज की पूरी लंबी लेंथ है तो बिकॉज नाउ ये मैंने चीजें लोकल लोगों से सुनी है तो लोग बोलते कि छह महीना अगर मेरा छत गिर गया इस बारिश में या इस छत गिर गया तो मैं छह महीना थोड़ी रुकूंगा कि भाई आप हमें पेड़ दो उससे अच्छा तो कंक्रीट इजिली अवेलेबल है सुबह फोन करो तो शाम को आ जाता है 
और एक महीने के अंदर घर बन जाता है तो दिस इज वन मेन रीजन जो कॉन्क्रिटाइजेशन ज्यादा हो रहा है ये ये एक्सपीरियंसेस लोगों के हैं क्योंकि लोग कुछ लोग चाहते भी हैं और पर कर नहीं पा रहे मतलब इसमें आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट एक्सपीरियंसेस सेम एक्सपीरियंसेस सेम स्टोरीज आई हर्ड फ्रॉम अ टैक्सी ड्राइवर टू अ हिस्टोरियन लाइक ओसी हंडा जी मालन जी मतलब जो अफोर्ड कर सकते हैं लेकिन उनको करने में दिक्कत आ रही है तो ये एक अलग तरीके का प्रॉब्लम है इसको कैसे करना है एंड अनदर मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम इज विद इन द माइंड ऑफ द पीपल जो हम बोलते हैं मॉडर्न मॉडर्न मतलब क्या क्योंकि जैसे 2000 जब मैं 2002 दो तीन में यहाँ काम शुरू किया था हमने वहाँ टीवी नहीं थे इंटरनेट नहीं था तो लोग हमको बोलते थे यार कहाँ से है मुंबई से तो मुंबई मतलब उनको लगता था कुछ तो कोई समझ यूज कि अच्छा इस पहाड़ के पीछे मुंबई है उनको लगता था कि पहाड़ के लेफ्ट में देखो तो मुंबई राइट में देखो तो दिल्ली इतना देवर वेरी इनोसेंट पीपल तो अभी क्या हो रहा है उन्होंने टीवी आ गया तो टीवी पे क्या देखते हैं कि सब बड़े बड़े मकान बन रहे हैं मॉडर्न हो रहे हैं सिटीज बढ़ रही है तो कंक्रीट इज अ स्टेप टुवर्ड्स मॉडर्निटी तो वो ये भूल रहे हैं कि वो यहाँ की नहीं है इट इज एन अर्बन थिंग एंड दैट इज वेर वो मॉडर्निटी के चक्कर में उसके पीछे भाग के दे आर गेटिंग डिटैच फ्रॉम देयर ओन हेरिटेज और हिस्ट्री वॉट यू कैन मतलब मैंने अभी काफी विलेजेस देखे है कि विलेज के शुरुआत में सब कॉन्क्रीट जंगल है मतलब जब मुझे कोई विलेजेस आई थिंक डॉक्टर भाली जी और तरुण श्रीधर जी को भी पता होगा जब बीच में देवीधार जाता तो मुझे पता था बहुत पुराना विलेज है वहां पे हम लोग पहुंचे हमें कोई घर नहीं दिख रहा था सब कंक्रीट के नए घर दिख रहे थे तो हमने लोगों को पूछा कि हम आपके पुराने बिल्डिंग का हमको लगा तोड़ दिए होंगे तो बोले नहीं नहीं ये सब इसके पीछे है मतलब दैट न्यू डेवलपमेंट वॉज एक्टिंग लाइक अ कर्टन जहाँ कुछ नहीं दिख रहा है और उसके पीछे जाओ तो इट वॉज अ ट्रेजर तो हमने बोला कि इसको कुछ करो एंड हर घर was in a good condition so that is how what is happening and even when it comes to temples matlab main logon ko convince i, I think tarun sir ji will agree main logon ko convince karne ki koshish karta hu ki aap original temple ko hai achhe condition mein you just need to restore it by simple means wo nahi karte but here the temple politics come politics comes in to kya karte hai paise sabke paas hai unke paas to wo rakh ke usko rakh ke usko tod ke naya बना देते हैं या उसी को रख के उसके बाजू में दूसरा बना देते हैं उस और चार पांच करोड़ रुपया डाल के मतलब पैसे तो डाल रहे हो बट यू आर लूजिंग द फेथ यूर लूजिंग द सेंटिटी यूर लूजिंग एवरीथिंग मतलब वो भगवान को भी चेंज कर रहे हैं मतलब हम लोग सरप्राइज से जो मांडल का मैंने आपको टेम्पल बताया उसके पहले वहां पे साफ था एज अ भगवान देर आर मोटिव ऑफ स्नेक एलिफेंट लाइन एंड जब हम लोग लास्ट ईयर गए तो वहां पे गणपति शंकर आ गए तो हमने लोगों को पूछा कि ये अपने भगवान ही क्यों चेंज कर दिए मतलब मंदिर चेंज कर दिया अलग अलग भगवान कैसे चेंज हो सकते तो तो नहीं मंदिर भी मॉडर्न हो गया तो भगवान भी मॉडर्न चाहिए अभी इसके ऊपर मतलब आई डोंट हैव एनी कमिंग टू डिस्क्राइब दिस थैंक्स स्वप्निल सो देयर आर टू थिंग्स यू हैव सेड वन इज अबाउट द पॉलिसी आई डोंट नो द टीडीआर पॉलिसी फॉर अस टीडीआर इज समथिंग डिफरेंट बट टीडीआर इज सम साउंड्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट दैट नीड्स टू बी लुक्ड एट and second of course is uh, something that is universal i think the idea that concrete is modern is uh, is is yes. everywhere all over india so <clears throat> I, i don't think there is any doubt about that everybody thinks that if you want to become great like bollywood and everything you have to have concrete houses so uh, i will move on next to uh, architect kiran kalamdani because he has also done a tremendous amount of work on yes. conservation Uh, especially in uh, maharashtra and some other places so uh, how how difficult or challenging what are the challenges that you have faced in this conservation work uh, you know whether it is uh, technological or people social government what kind of challenges do you think are there and how can we conserve this uh, traditional architecture Uh, well i think uh, what uh, mr bali said or what sapnil bole has gone into uh, is indeed quite nice and very significant that uh, a whole system of governing ourselves has changed you know because a village based economy which was largely a barter kind of exchange where you had uh, especially in maharashtra you have the bara balutedar and uh, what bali mr bali dr bali said there is similar system where wood workers and mud workers and probably stone workers they are, they have their craft guilds and uh, this entire system was changed at the behest of a public works department pwd the government uh, the whole system of law 
and the whole system of taking decisions in a community. You know that if that whole entire infrastructure about that has been dismantled, as we experience in all our uh, all our country and our districts and villages, then it is very difficult to actually get back that whole interdependence that that once used to be, because our entire economics of the country and probably <coughs> economics of all these smaller villages and even the towns is geared towards a completely different. Uh, Goal and using completely different means, you know, like what Sapnil also said, that they spend more uh, money uh, building the roads, probably because the automobile should ply on on all those roads. You know, I remember that uh, I was in uh, uh, in Himachal you know, for a 42-day camp that was in 1988, uh, where the Archaeological Survey of India was holding a camp there in the Kangra Fort. And uh, of course, that Kangra Fort and all those regions are quite different. The Western Himachal is mm. quite different from what Sapnil show, showed. It's very exotic. Sapnil, I have never seen uh, such very exotic Thank buildings. You, and uh, it's a wonderful presentation by you also. Uh, a lot of good mm -hmm. work. And my question to you would be that where do you get the money, you know, to actually do that? You know, because that becomes the main question here, because the community is no longer as prosperous to support you know, such an exercise. We did a similar work in Uttarakhand in this uh, small uh, you know, ashram of Maya, Mayavati, which is in the Champawat district, 6,400 uh, feet above sea level, and, and which is also on the Nepal border. Of course, this place was for uh, the uh, Swami Vivekananda's uh, place where he visited. Uh, only once uh, where uh, an ashram was set up by an English couple. And uh, we also, you know, did a complete report and everything and we waited for the money to come. Fortunately, the Ramakrishna Mutt, you know, has got a great tradition of, of begging probably, you know, and getting the money out of that. You know, it's a high profile begging, I would call it. <laughs> and uh, they got the money. Uh, till they got the money, they spent some from their own pockets and we showed them how to do the conservation of the building. We were fortunate enough to get a 10,000 square foot bungalow which, in which Vivekananda stayed uh, over a period of three years. And once they got the money, they chucked us out of that, of that uh, place. You know? <laughs> so even Ramakrishna Mart is probably not above uh, all this kind of uh, usual things that happen in projects. Uh, but uh, I would say that uh, the, the kind of way in which these people build, you know, they build with the, with the terrain, they build with the materials. And in this particular case, they, they had tried to, uh, you know, uh, use a, an English model because it was the, the house of a tea estate owner who was a general and who sold it to, to these people. And they made a mutt out of that, an English lady called uh, Charlotte Sevier and her husband. They joined Vivekananda and they came and stayed there and that women stayed for 22 years in that place and set up that whole place. Now it's a very large 50 acre campus in Mayavati, which is near a place called Lohaghat. Uh, and the most unfortunate thing is that we all know Laurie Baker yeah. and there is this house of his at Pithoragad. And uh, a few, few days ago, uh, one of my ex uh, employees, you know, he came, he said, now I'm doing a practice. And I've got this uh, odd commission of restoring Laurie Baker's first house, which is in Pithoragad. It's also about a 10,000 square foot house. And that is also wanting to get conserved. And it's very similar to what we did in Mayavati. So we told him that, boy, first you've got to get the, the money to do this. And like you said, there is no community around that place now. You know, it's owned by an event manager from Delhi. So he owns the place. They've bought it out and all that. So now when this kind of ownership changes, that further complicates the associations that are there with this kind of heritage. Because we all associate Laurie Baker with a completely different mindset and in a completely other end of our country where he has his worked largely. But very few of us know that his early uh, work stages were in, in Himachal, uh, in Uttarakhand, not Himachal. So... Uh, it is extremely important, I think, that very and very good that you got the community to come and think towards that and did not rely on any government funding or any government statutes, you know, because there are no government statutes about conservation in those areas, as far as I know. Uh, so 
you know building a whole social wall around these structures is very important the intentions the kind of techniques that one uses uh, the means by which one one tries to get all this is is also a, an, an important issue nowadays you know because the whole community structure of decision making has fallen apart mm -hmm. like what dr bali said so uh, an architect's job is not just about the structure and the uh, you know the in the physical environment but also the kind of intangible environment that holds this everything together i think uh, that that's also uh, quite important there and unless you have you can ensure that uh, it it might be uh, you know going very slow or it might be short lived uh, to to actually dream of a a world in which you know all these things will get nicely kept like what we see in europe probably you know Uh, recently we launched the Con conservation architects community of india uh, all of us uh, who came back fr uh, from york or wherever and uh, what we uh, really found out is that you know the archaeological survey of india does a different kind of conservation which is very sarkari which is very rigid and uh, which is extremely uh, you know difficult to emulate in a private world and they do a very small portion of conservation that is required in the country they they've got just about 5000 listed buildings where you pick up any settlement any district or any city and you will find an equal number of things that are crying out to get conserved they're crying out to you know really uh, document the kind of wisdom that went into making of the houses uh, what roshni will tell you from her environmental uh, studies experience is very obviously that the older environment the older buildings they perform much better climatically or with respect to the earthquakes like you showed us or with the terrain or the various natural materials that one finds in that place and uh, really this tdr uh, was was completely out of the blue you know <laughs> I, i also didn't know that there was a, there was a timber distribution rights you know that in, in that place so i think sapnil uh, bole it's been uh, quite interesting the the path that you have chosen to walk i don't know whether if, if that is your main uh, business or main uh, you know vocation where you earn your bread and butter uh, or it's just one of those uh, you know also done kind of things what is it it's one of those done passionate kind of thing obviously obviously but it's important <laughs> to i think nurse this kind of a passion and carry it to a complete logical conclusion and uh, the, the 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 periods in which i we chose to pick up conservation as as a vocation people would have said that this would have been suicidal 32 years ago right. and uh, well we have come near to suicide in many many of the projects and many cases <laughs> <laughs> but thank god we have survived because we we did develop parallel ways of supporting ourselves and things like that Uh, uh, I, think, I, i think financial aspect definitely is is an is an aspect in conservation no no like here i would in terms of finances what you spoke about you asked here what we did is my first question to unko maine gaon walon ko pucha tha ki government kyu karegi my that was my first question ki government ka kaam hai rasta dena light bijli lana pani dena kyunki mandir ki pani mandir ki hai mandir is yours mandir gaon ka hai so agar mere ghar मैं कुछ होता है तो मैं गवर्नमेंट के पास नहीं जाऊंगा मैं खुद ही रिपेयर करूंगा तो अगर मंदिर फिर गवर्नमेंट क्यों क्योंकि ऐसे तो हिमाचल नहीं ऑल हिमाचल में करोड़ों मंदिर होंगे यहाँ ही क्यों आएंगे दैट इज वेयर आई स्टार्टेड एंड इवेंचुअली आफ्टर डूइंग मल्टीपल मीटिंग एंड एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग अभी वॉट द कमिटी हैज डिसाइडेड इज की लाइक नाउ द देवता डीटी हु रिसाइड ऑन द टॉप ऑफ चेन अराउंड टेन थाउजेंड फैमिलीज बिलीव इन द डीटी इन द फाइव वैलीज so they decided that per family at minimum 2500 rupees they will contribute so that, that comes to around 2.5 crore and then rest the community will approach uh, kulu manali association and rest of the associations local mla and etc etc so even even if they come up with 2.5 crore it will be great usme se unhone ye bhi kiya ki the first thing community decided was to collect fund from the village itself where the temple stands तो आज आज के डेट पे उन्होंने आई थिंक एट टू नाइन लैक्स लेके रखे हुए हैं लेकिन कोविड की वजह से दे हैव नॉट गॉन अहेड दे विल स्टार्ट द प्रोसेस अभी यू आर अवेयर हाउ स्लो इट टेक्स प्लेस सो इट मे टेक अनदर ईयर और व्हाट एवर टू इयर्स बट व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज वी आर ट्राइंग टू लाइक इसको देख के वी आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू कन्विंस पीपल फ्रॉम पांगना सो इन द होल थिंग व्हाट वी 
to as we try like if you ask me how i get money to do all these things i am right now not getting money to do con <coughs> conservation but we try to get support from uh, say intac or from your surat Pur godrej or sairaj godrej foundation helps us in giving this travel grant sometimes like agar char bar jaye to do bar grant milte do bar khud ka paisa dalte like what we earn from our architectural practice we put in over here but the only thing is we have not left it because why we have not left this for one sole reason is this technology which you have seen in whole of the pendrin i have not gone in detail of it because iska har ek element door window staircase plinth everything has a earthquake angle to it matlab agar ye building mein earthquake aata hai to our ancestors have taken then enough care ki building giregi nahi aur insaan mar nahi sakta hai like nowadays what happened building it insaan mar jata hai but that is that was the limit that was the height of what they have thought about so we saw, and the, all these were built by indians we have only built it it's not built by french britishers portuguese anybody so it was ki hona chahiye and india mein like this technology katkuni what you are talking about worldwide only exists in certain parts of himachal and thoda sa you can see it in pakistan but majorly the maximum portion is with us so we just thought ki we need to document it on our own anyhow because government would uh, well you can't okay they supported us government supported us by giving the letters where we were able to stay in their rest houses guest houses at least utna paisa bach jata tha but apart mm-hmm. from that now this like last month they have approached us ki okay give us a road map ki what you want to do matlab 17 18 saal gaye ye sab hone ke liye So I keep telling them that when I started, I had lot of hair over here. Now this is what my condition has become now. But at least they, <laughs> they, they are agreeing that कुछ करना चाहिए इसके ऊपर इसको कुछ करना चाहिए. Because otherwise this India अलावा ये कहीं नहीं रहेगा. So we are just hoping. So, I, I think that uh, Swapnil, uh, what Mr. Kalandani has said and what you are saying also that uh, the community definitely needs to put community. in and, and you know take. Community the, can do wonder. Yeah. Community, yeah. I agree. But but I think that also beyond that there should be some support from government like we have seen in yes. many European countries you know we see just a few hundred years old houses being preserved and people it has been converted into museum people are coming so much from you know and we have got much more than that we have got such old structures one thousand years old two thousand something like that and it is ghar ki mulki dal barabar de sa hai I think we we have too many of heritage building all over India I guess. Yes, I, I think so, it's a subject that has been very largely ignored by the economists of the country, and uh, there was a large seminar which was held here in Pune about four or five years ago. We talked about the economics of heritage conservation, and uh, which is a completely new subject as far as India is concerned. We asked the Gokhale Institute of Politics and Economics here, which is a very renowned institute, that do they have any people who have worked on these? Have there been any theses? Any subjects taken up for this? They said this is a completely new thing to us. Whereas the Getty Conservation Institute has been holding workshops over the last ten years. It's been internationally <coughs> renowned on all this, and uh, you know it's it's a matter of just using our money wisely and putting it where our heart is. You know, so that is probably one thing which India has not been able to get around doing. You know, it's it's now just started making temples like Ram Mandir and this and that and Kashi Vishwanath and all these things it's now getting into that mode probably but the whole community the smaller officers uh, the the small people who sit in big chairs like what imran khan says you know all that has to get together and and sort of get towards looking at this one direction probably and maybe it will come but but there has to be a great push in that direction sorry yes roshni i can yes no no i think it's a wonderful discussion we are having and i see here a question from or rather a, a point from priyanka sinha which is also pointing towards the same thing she's saying that uh, we have uh, been to old manali and uh, has it has such beautiful yet uh, difficult terrain and structures lying in dilapidated conditions and this is something that you know i saw all over india whether you go to rajasthan whether you go to himachal pradesh Uh, such beautiful structures and nobody living in them it's just abandoned or uh, maybe you know it is being used some very tiny portion of it is being used because the uh, the, the societal structure there has uh, sort of dismantled and it's there's nobody to look at this so i would ask a question to all of you or uh, all three of you as to what can what can we think of uh, these kind of structures what would you suggest if you had to suggest something 
about these dilapidated but traditional old structures? What can we do about them? I think a quick answer to that is, is document them. Try to find which, docu which, which structures, uh, you know, priority wise, which are the more important ones or where money could be spent, whether the owners are willing to part with some, someone, are the banks willing to issue some, uh, you know, credits to these people? Uh, is it is it sustainable through some kind of a, converting them into pensiones or homestays or you know hotels or whatever and adaptive reuse for that? So unless there is a larger community, you know, which is beyond just the village community, looking at it at, at, a, at a district level, at a state level, and and then at a national level, so. Uh, there has to be a definite policy for conservation at all levels. If that works, then probably such things will start working. Yes, I think adaptive reuse you mentioned is uh, something that uh, that can definitely happen. Uh, and there's a lot of scope for that. Swapnil and Mr. Dr. Bali, would you like to add anything? Uh, yes, it is, uh, it is mandatory to uh, save the heritage building which are in dilapidated states in Himachal Pradesh, it is a, a required that a society be made by the community and uh, they think over it and uh, they should uh, master some fund uh, for that purpose. And also government ko bhi aisa ek mechanism, government ko bhi ek memorandum ke through se to society ko batana bhi chahiye ke is tarah ki jo buildings hain, jo humare ko atit se jodti hai, humare paas se jodti hai, so, इनको सस्टेन करने के लिए इसको रिनोवेट करने के लिए ऐसे कार्य किया जाए इस तरह का मैकेनिज्म जो मैं समझता हूं कि भाई हमारे जो छोटे क्लब्स हैं चाहे यूथ क्लब्स हैं चाहे जो लोग एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट्स हैं या जो कल्चर को कंजर्व करने वाले लोग हैं उन लोगों को इकट्ठा होना पड़ेगा अदरवाइज सरकार के ऊपर ही अगर हमारा राइंस रहता है तो मुझे लगता है कि अभी स्वप्न जी ने कितनी बिल्डिंग लगाई दरकोटी का पूरा जो Fort Kaju premises tha, that was reduced to ashes. So, with each passing day, all these relics of uh, the past is being uh, disappeared mm -hmm. due to the apathy of the commoners and common people and the government also. So, I think that the society is going to be in the same way. And there is a fundraising. I think that I will share this with you. कि हिमाचल में जितना हमारा ये टेंपल्स का जो मैकेनिज्म होता है टेंपल में इस तरह की ट्रेडिशंस होती हैं कि अगर टेंपल का प्रतिष्ठा होती है जब उसको उसका एंट्रेंस जो उसका एंट्रेंस सेरेमनी होता है तो उसमें बहुत सारे काम जो है कम्युनिटी ही आज भी करती है करती है रहती है कि वो काम करना ही होता है जो मंदिर के ऊपर एक कुरंड लगता है एक लकड़ी जो लंबा लकड़ी होता है जो जहां पर एक पार्टिंग होता है रूप का होता है तो उसके लिए सारे गांव के लोगों की ड्यूटी जो है वो असाइन हो जाती है और वो जंगल में जाकर के वहां से पूरा एक जो लकड़ी का पूरा जो एक पूरा मांस होता है उसको उठा करके ले आते हैं और वो भी फास्टिंग पे ही होते सारे के सारे तो मुझे लगता है कि जो चैनी में काम स्वप्न जी ने किया है कि उसी तरह से कम्युनिटी को अवेकन करना है दे शुड बी मेड फेमिलियर कि भी जो हमारा जो कल्चर हेरिटेज है वो हमारे अपने प्रयासों से ही बच सकता है अगर हम उस फंड को जो हम कई जगह मंदिरों में क्या होता है कि हमारे बड़े-बड़े भंडारे लगते हैं भूंडा जैसे यज्ञ होते हैं जिसमें बहुत सारा करोड़ों का रुपया उसमें जो है लगता है वो बर्बाद भी हो जाता है क्योंकि भूंडा जो यज्ञ होता है एक नरमित यज्ञ है हिमाचल में जो 12 12 साल बाद बड़े-बड़े मंदिरों में भी होता है मैं सोचता हूं कि इस तरह की जो स्पेंडिंग्स मंदिरों में जो हो रही है जो हमारे हेरिटेज में जो मंदिर है उनसे उसको उस पद उस जो जो फंड है उसको थोड़ा सा डाइवर्ट करके उस पैसे को कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क में जो है वहां के वहां के जो उसका जो आर्किटेक्चर ग्रेंजर है उसको बचाने के लिए किया जाए तो मैं समझता हूं कि वो एक बेटर एक पहल होगी और जैसे मैंने पहले भी कहा कि अगर ये जो हेरिटेज बिल्डिंग्स हैं चाहे किसी की भी ओनरशिप में है जैसे सर ने पहले कहा कि कि अगर इस कम्युनिटी बिल्डिंग्स के लिए एक कॉमन फंड का एक पूल जो है उसको एक कॉमन जो फंड है उसको हम रेज कर सकते हैं वी कैन गिव अ न्यू शेप टू दोस डिकेइंग बिल्डिंग्स मैं सोचता हूं कि जो कम्युनिटी में एक इस तरह का स्पिरिट पैदा हो एक कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटीज बने और वो इसको कंजर्वेशन के लिए काम करे अदरवाइज सरकार के ऊपर ही अगर हमारी डिपेंडेंस रहती है 
तो हिमाचल का तो उदाहरण सामने ही है जितने भी यहाँ के जो मोनुमेंटल बिल्डिंग्स है ऑलमोस्ट मैं समझता हूँ ऑन द वर्ज ऑफ डिके पर ही है और उसके रेस्टोरेशन के लिए बहुत ज्यादा सरकार से फंड नहीं मिलता है बहुत ही कम फंड मिलता है अगर रेस्टोरेशन की हम बात करें तो मैं सोचता हूँ कि हमें कम्युनिटी एज ए होल जो है वी शुड कम फॉरवर्ड टू सेव द हेरिटेज ऑफ दिस रिच हेरिटेज ऑफ हिमाचल प्रदेश इस पर हमें स्वयं काम करना पड़ेगा कम्युनिटी को अवेकन करना पड़ेगा तो आप लोगों के जो प्रयास हैं इस दिशा में बहुत अच्छे चल रहे हैं और बाकी मैं इसको एक डॉक्यूमेंटेशन की जैसे बात की सर ने पहले भी पैनल में कि भाई डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इसकी की जाए प्रॉपर और गवर्नमेंट को उसको प्रेजेंट किया जाए और कुछ फंडिंग गवर्नमेंट से लेकर ये आ जाए और बाकी जो कम्युनिटी के पास इतना ज्यादा जो मंदिर से जुड़े हुए जो लोग होते हैं एक मंदिर का जो जुरिस्टिक्शन होता है लगभग एज मेनी एज वन फाइव हंड्रेड टू वन थाउजेंड हाउस होल्ड में होता है अगर वो थोड़ी थोड़ी फंडिंग होती रहे और विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम विद इन फाइव ईयर्स या टेन ईयर्स में जो है इतना फंड रेज हो जाएगा कि उस मंदिर के जो उसकी जो प्राचीन पुरातन जो उसकी शैली है उसको रिस्टोर करना कोई मुश्किल कार्य नहीं होता एक विल होना चाहिए और दूसरी बात यह मैं कहूंगा कि भी अपने कल्चर के प्रति भी डोंट हैव अटैचमेंट टू अवर कल्चर अंटिल वी डिवेलप द अटैचमेंट टू कल्चर वी के नॉट गो इन द राइट डायरेक्शन टू सेव द कल्चर ऑफ अवर लोकेलिटी मैं समझता हूँ कि कल्चर के बचाने से ही हमारा अतीत बच सकता है और हमारे पास कुछ मोनूमेंट्स होंगे हमारे पास जो हेरिटेज होगी और वो हेरिटेज ही जो है एक हमारे यहाँ के जो सोशल कस्टम्स हैं उससे जुड़े हुए हैं उससे हम उसे रिलेट कर पाएंगे अगर हेरिटेज नहीं होगा कोई हमारे पास रेलिक्स ही नहीं होगा तो हम किससे रिलेट करेंगे उससे यानी कि कल्चर की वजह से ही इतिहास जिंदा रहता है यानी कि जो हमारा आर्ट आर्किटेक्चर है उसके ही माध्यम से हमारा जो इतिहास है वो जीवित रहेगा उसके प्रमाण भी जीवित रहेंगे अदरवाइज तो किस किससे कहानियों में हमारी बातें रह जाएंगी मुझे लगता है कि जो कम्युनिटी एज ए होल अगर इसके बारे में सोचा जाए ये हमारे आर्ट आर्किटेक्चर के कंजर्वेशन के लिए बात करें या फोक आर्ट की हम बात करते हैं इसके लिए सभी को सामूहिक रूप से हमें ये प्रयास करने होंगे और तभी शायद मुझे लगता है कि हमारा जो एक कल्चरल जो एक आर्ट आर्किटेक्चरल जो हमारे जो यहाँ पर जो हेरिटेज बिल्डिंग्स है जो आर्किटेक्चरल जो ग्रेंजर्स है वो खत्म हो रहे हैं उसको हम बचा सकते दादाजी ने बताया दादाजी के ओरल ट्रेडिशन वेरी लेस एंड इवन Like if you talk on architecture, जो इंटैक्ट की हेरिटेज लिस्ट होती है लाइक बॉम्बे हैज हेरिटेज लिस्टिंग डेली हैज हेरिटेज लिस्टिंग राइट हिमाचल में हेरिटेज लिस्टिंग हुई नहीं है मतलब और जो ए एस आई की हेरिटेज लिस्ट है उसमें आई थिंक देर आर जिन चुन के दस स्ट्रक्चर है शायद फॉर होल स्टेट इफ यू कंपेयर चलो कुछ किया मतलब आई डोंट नो वाइट हैज नॉट बिन डन स्कीप हुआ है बट नथिंग हैज बीन डॉक्यूमेंटेड so i think what what uh, dr bali has said is very interesting about you know having to create some kind of a social structure where there are certain uh, groups or societies or cooperatives which are formed which can take care of not just the cultural uh, the rituals but also the architecture part which is a very interesting and that can be suggested uh, you know for every which already might be existing all we need to do is to probably activate these groups to work on also the preservation of architecture there's a question here from one mr vikesh who has asked can tourism play a role in this yes uh, very much tourism can play a role but tourism ko badhava dene like last month only i was in himachal to attend a, uh, as a panelist to uh, on a uh, tourism conclave 2021 karke unka theme hi tha ki how to develop tourism in rural areas of himachal problem ye hai ki jo presentation like I think in that whole of those series of uh, seminars, I was the only architect who presented on architecture of Himachal. बाकी जो सब लोग दिखा रहे थे तो वो मेरे presentation के बाद सब बोल रहे हैं कि हमें ये building ही पता नहीं है. So my point is कि आपको अगर आपके इधर के architecture के बारे में या culture के बारे में you don't know about the places which are existing in your own state, तो develop कैसे करोगे? Develop करने के लिए पता तो होना चाहिए तू तू create a road map you need to have a road first of all और road कहाँ जा रहा है कैसे जा रहा है कहाँ तक जाना है? तो ये हालत है राइट नाउ सो अगर 
ये लोगों तक ज्यादा पहुंचने लग जाएगा लाइक इफ यू इफ यू टेक अ केस ऑफ चेनी और इफ यू टेक अ केस ऑफ कांगड़ा और लास्ट लास्ट मंथ व्हेन यू वर लाइक इन अक्टूबर व्हेन वी वेंट अराउंड एवरी प्लेस यू मस्ट हैव सीन कि एवरी प्लेस हैज द पोटेंशियल टू डेवलप इनटू अ टूरिस्ट सर्किट न्यू सर्किट्स कैन बी डिराइव लाइक एज आई सेड पिछले में नहीं हम गौर government ko uh, have emailed them ki okay we can create new circuits they told they approached the surprisingly they approached this time saying ki can you give a proposed new circuit so maine ha naye circuit de sakte hai but we need to plan for that circuit uska history information as dr bali said ki circuit cannot be just derived main naam dunga aur circuit ban gaya aise to hoga nahi if i want to go from a to b point i need to know about the history culture social aspects local people of that place तो ये सारा जो जुड़ना होगा वो एक्सरसाइज जो करनी होगी वो किसी वो करनी हो करनी चाहिए किसी में आई थिंक वंस दैट इज डन कोर्स देयर इज लॉट ऑफ स्कोप बिकॉज ऑलरेडी शिमला कुल्लू मनाली इज डिस्ट्रॉयड मतलब आई तो वंडर सॉरी कि लोग दो दो तीन तीन घंटा लाइन लगा के कुल्लू मनाली क्यों जा रहे हैं और क्या देखने जा रहे हैं विच मतलब यहाँ से गर्दी लाइक यहाँ से क्राउड डेली से निकल के वहां जाके एक्यूमलेट हो जाता है बॉम्बे से हम यहाँ जाके वहाँ एक्यूमलेट हो रहे हैं लाइक गेटिंग स्टक फोर आवर्स इन अ ट्रैफिक so i don't know what are they going rather they could go to these internal areas rural areas of himachi but promotion like it has not been promoted in that way where tourists will go and we being indians normally i have seen foreigners going there but we been typical indians humko jo tick mark karna hota hai ki chalo is saal humne ye tick mark kar liya ye dekh liya barf dekh liya khatam ho gaya so nothing happens beyond that so i think what you're saying is very important that uh... tourism can be uh, helpful in the conservation of these structures but it has to have a proper road map yeah like my observations also were during my visit that uh, uh, well people appreciated the roads which were reaching to the very corners to every village but at the same time i saw the destruction that was happening because of these roads and uh, how uh, you know callously the mountain was cut in many places and things are not done in a proper way the way they should have been so it is important to have a road map to look at all the conservation structures and also the ecology and environment we should not forget that uh, himachal pradesh has probably got the highest number of uh, yes, sacred forest. groves yes. the forest uh, the sacred groves in india so uh, that's because of its uh, natural heritage the, all this natural area so uh, unfortunately there are there is no single guidelines rules regulation formulated for tourism or preservation or anything in himachal nothing mm-hmm. there is no guideline and like shimla shimla mein jo pichle 2 3 mahine pehle building giri suddenly they realized ki bahut buildings are illegal that kuch matlab dr bali will be in a better position to answer all these questions neither <laughs> nothing nothing no guideline that is why all these things are happening okay i think that uh, there are quite a few questions but i don't think we can go into the detailed questions here uh, i i think that this one question from sneha which i would like to address to you swapnil and also uh, mr kalamdani that's related to how uh, we can have more uh, architecture students to take up conservation projects i mean uh, you know that uh, i'm sure a lot of architecture students are here attending this webinar so maybe you can Uh, give a word or two to them uh, uh, can you repeat the question uh, what <coughs> is your uh, what is your advice or how would you guide architecture students to take up conservation uh, here i won't add a guide or anything but i will just say in a very simple way ki architect banne ke baad it does not mean ki sirf buildings hi banane like generally what happens is architect ban gaya to common perception is ki naye building banana hai and lot of time people think conservation matlab क्या है पुराने बिल्डिंग को धोखे तो निकालना है साफ तो करना है मतलब दिस इज व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट जनरल परसेप्शन ऑफ व्हाट पीपल थिंक अबाउट कॉन्जर्वेशन एंड अ बिल्डिंग अ न्यू टॉवर और स्काई स्क्रेपर और मल्टी स्टोरी बिल्डिंग या लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल अभी नाउ लाइक सो फॉर एग्जांपल अभी हम लोग वी आर डूइंग मॉडर्न बंगलोज सो वी डिड नाउ टू बंगलोज इन लोनावाला वन तलेगांव एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशंस आई एम जस्ट गिवन ऑफबीट एग्जांपल वी डिड अ स्लोपिंग रूफ बंगलो सो द मोमेंट माय आर्किटेक्ट कलीग्स माय कलीग्स ऑल दोस बंगलोज दे सेड कि यार मॉडर्न बंगलो क्यों नहीं बनाया या पुराना बंगलो क्यों बनाया तो मैं तो वी वर लाइक अरे ये पुराना नहीं अभी बन रहा है मॉडर्न बंगलो ये गो इंसिडेंट थी नहीं फिर स्लोपिंग रूफ क्यों है मतलब दिस इज अ परसेप्शन ऑफ लाइक व्हाट इज मॉडर्न व्हाट इज अगर ये हम आर्किटेक्ट में ही ऐसा परसेप्शन है तो आई डोंट नो वाई व्हाट इज इट आउटसाइड बट आई विल आई वुड लाइक टू टेल आर्किटेक्ट न्यू आर्किटेक्ट बड़ी इफ यू लाइक सी दिस फॉर मी दिस स्टार्टेड एज अ पैशन 
I found out that like this kind of architecture didn't exist anywhere else, and I started. अगर मैं तर, okay when I started in 2003 when I was 22, 23 years old, लोगों ने मुझे actually पूछा कि यार retirement वाले काम अभी क्यों कर रहे हो? This was a question which had been bombarded to me many times. So तब मैं बोलता था अभी वो नहीं बोलता हूँ तब मैं बोलता था कि आप उल्टा क्यों नहीं सोचते कि अगर मैं मैं ही first हूँ ये कर पाया तो why why can't I think कि I will be the first one to do it? और वाई कंट आई डू इट क्यों रिटायरमेंट बाद रिटायरमेंट बाद में ही क्यों कर हाँ रिसर्च रिसर्च कौन करता है ये तो सब बात की है पचास साल के बाद कर लो राइट दिस वॉज द रिएक्शन जो एन आई स्टार्टेड टू वर पीपल वो कमेंडिंग नॉट सो देर आई आई वुड से एवरी बर्ड लाइक ऑल द बर्डिंग आर्किटेक्ट और जो यंगस्टर है डोंट लिसन टू ऑल दिस थिंग इफ यू फील वॉट योर डूइंग इज राइट बट जस्ट बी स्मार्ट इनफ टू डू इट इन सच वे कि रास्ते पे ना आ जाए मतलब इन लाइक एज किरण सर वो तो आस्किंग के लिए पैसे कहाँ से आते क्या है ओके येस इफ यू थिंक यू विल गेट सम फंड यू गो अराउंड यू ट्राई टू डू इट इन अ स्मार्ट वे बट यू नीड टू डू इट हाँ और कभी खुद से करना पड़ा खुद के थोड़े पैसे डालने पड़े मतलब आई नोट नो दिस इज राइट और रॉन्ग थोड़े डालो बिकॉज अगर थोड़े डालोगे तो दूसरे से आते भी है बट अदरवाइज वर्क विल हॉल लाइक इफ लाइक इफ आई डोंट डू दिस वर्क लाइक इफ वी डोंट डू दिस वर्क इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू गो फॉरवर्ड Because last twenty years, say I have not seen an architect coming. Like I have couple of architects friends from Himachal. वो खुद भी नहीं जुड़ रहे हैं इसमें. Unfortunate है. मतलब उनको Delhi जाना है, उनको Bombay जाना है, उनको कहीं पे भी जाना है. लेकिन Himachal में नहीं यहाँ कहाँ रहेंगे? यहाँ पैसे नहीं मिलते हैं. तो मैं उनको बोलता हूँ पैसे छोड़ो, काम शुरू करेंगे तो पैसे आ जाएंगे ना. पर कुछ तो करना चाहिए पैसे के लिए. I think I am. <laughs> I think the, I think the as to the younger architects, I would say, there are good buildings and there are bad buildings. So, they are they not necessarily belong to the modern or the traditional category. And uh, while you're studying architecture, you're trying to understand what is good architecture. Uh, it might come from anywhere, you know. and uh, my personal uh, you know preference for this kind of a career came out of that i was not satisfied with the contemporary buildings the way they were coming up yes. the way they were performing uh, in terms of climate uh, yes. culture or even aesthetics yeah so ye sab jo kuch galat ho raha hai aisa lag raha mujhe second year mein jab main tha tab mujhe laga ki kuch to galat ho raha hai kuch to reh gaya piche jo dekhna chahiye hai na और एक फ्रेंच आर्कियोलॉजिस्ट था जिसने हम लोगों को हम लोग मांडू गए थे एज यंग आर्किटेक्ट एंड ही बीन स्टडिंग मांडू अलोन फॉर ट्वेल्व इयर्स एंड ही वॉज वेरी केयरफुली रिकॉर्डिंग बिल्डिंग्स एंड ही टू कावर हेल्प यू नो ही शोड अस हाउ टू फोटोग्राफ बिल्डिंग्स हाउ टू एक्सपीरियंस दम थिंग्स लाइक दैट सो आई थिंक डेवलपिंग अ पर्सनल कन्विक्शन अबाउट आर्किटेक्चर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट through experience and not just looking at probably internet pictures or uh, looking at you know the media but i think architecture is is something that one experiences uh, with all your senses and i was drawn towards an architecture which satisfied all of these yeah so for us even as a practice there is no distinction between making a new building or conserving a new okay. building. i think there is enough create creativity in both yeah <laughs> In fact, sir, what I realized with old building was like it helped me in designing new building because we learned lot of technological details like door details, window details, how we used to they used to do then active passive architecture, how light used to filter. Like these things, you can you learn from these buildings, and then if possible, if you are uh, and you can apply it into your new modern buildings when you do it. And many times they are not like. Uh... watertight compartments you know it's not as if you do when you're doing an old building you're not being creative of course you surrender your creativity to a certain extent but there is a lot of thing lot of yes. things that you imbibe and then a lot of things that you could carry forward as tradition what louis kahn had said or what uh, hasan fati had said that tradition is not something which is frozen in an ice box you know it is something which you understand you imbibe uh, you take it forward and uh, you add to it you know Unselfconsciously or uh, with uh, enough humility, कि ये हमारे जो पुरखों ने जो सोचा है इसके बारे में उसको हम ठीक तरह से जान ले पहले उसको उसको हम समझ ले और फिर अगर बनती है तो हम थोड़ा सा उसको आगे एक कदम आगे ले जाए तो क्या कहने हैं उसके बारे में 
you know, and, and our kind of architecture doesn't put an architect or a, an artist on a pedestal. You know, we are trying to find a universal truth in our expression. We're finding universal expression. Just like Himachal ke logon ka architecture kis tarah ka hona uh, architect ka ya kisi ek, uh, you know, craftsman ka koi naam leta hai. Bahut mushkil hai. It's a very, very collaborative effort. You know, that is what our heritage is teaching us. That we should look at our creations as a collaborative effort of a, of a community. Only then, you know, our community will speak as one. You know? So even symbolically, it has got a lot of associations for the community. It's got a lot of lessons, probably which we have lost in modern times. Yes, I think very beautifully said, uh, Mr. Kalandani, that it's a collaborative effort. And also that uh, sounds... Uh, that goes with what Mr. B Dr. Bali had said earlier about how the community used to work together. True, I just true. would like to <clears throat> take one last, actually it's a comment or question, but by uh, Ankit Sood. Uh, uh, he's here and he's worked a lot on tourism in Himachal and also conservation of structures. Uh, he's asking about, he's saying that every year we lose two to three heritage villages along with the temples in Kulu Valley. Can any professors present here help us document the reasons and uh, prevention causes for, for that with the help of their students? Is that something that any one of you would? I replied to him. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no, we have been uh, like, uh, we have been behind Ankit Sood. Uh, we, uh, I know him in the past 10 years. So uh, where his homestay also is. So as we said, I think we had discussed couple of months ago, okay, this May or June, we need to go there and document this couple of villages because there are still one or two villages left in Kulu Valley where the road abhi ban rahi hai, bani nahi hai completely. So before road touches that village, it's our thing to document it. So that is what I replied to him, ki, hopefully we will be there to document those villages before at least two three to village bacha Yes, it would be very sad if there. these villages would disappear forever. We just need their local support to allow us because I said that village document karna to logon ka sehmati hona, logon ka trust hona bahut zaruri and I think he's the right person to do that. Yes. <coughs> In fact, I would say there are a number of, abhi do nidhi, kam se kam, there are around 40 to 50 villages which have not been covered by road. And mm -hmm. jo hai, because we are at a loss, because we are not professional architects, you know, so we can go with you and make people understand the value of their traditional architecture because as soon as a road arrives right. to their uh, you know village the cement and the concrete just comes <laughs> behind it perception <laughs> change ये बड़े architectural universities का बड़ा role है. I don't know whether professors are here or not. But जैसे हमने SEPT को भी approach किया और Bombay और मतलब जो भी क्योंकि जब तीन चार ऐसे एक project लेकर एक महीना spend करते हैं बच्चे एक village में तो they can really do wonders. और इसमें तो we would really like your help. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Ankit, जैसे मैंने पहले Maybe you will say that he told exactly a lot of, uh, he had approached a lot of colleges, but unfortunately, kya hota hai ki, as Himachal is a very difficult place to work. So, koi aaya hi nahi. so what we have decided is ki, with the help of Ankit and his uh, team over there, like we will go and document these places because they will tell us where to go, which will document. We know four or five for sure, but as I said, there are 40 maybe. Abhi, usko ek saal mein karna muskil hoga because ah, for that we, slowly, yes. haan, slowly for that we'll require uh, like a team working there we'll require funds to go sab soch ke we need to think how to go about it Anjim. i'm sure there are many architectural college faculty members who are there today on this on this program and i'm sure like they would like to take this opportunity to join swapnil and help him you know in it would also be a great <coughs> opportunity for the for the uh, students to get exposed to the traditional architecture mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know then they could get really into the conservation mm -hmm. work so uh, i think uh, with that we would like to uh, sort of uh, get back into our uh, uh, program and uh, i i think we had a very interesting discussion and I, I mean i wish we could continue further on this but we have already reached close to 6 pm and we were supposed to complete close it at 5 30. So uh, I would uh, hand over now to Sneha 
to uh, you know take this take the, take this forward to close the program Neha. thank you so much <clears throat> uh, can i just add one thing yes if if possible in future i would just want to give one lecture on only the tech cartoony technology thing <laughs> because I it is important because i read a couple of questions uh, over there because it will i will require because i can dissipate building from a plinth level to roof level wo alag hi ho jayega because i will then talk only on one building yes yes i think so we'll do that because there are some couple of questions here which are yes. very technical i thought that right. if i ask that then the oh, probably all time will go only in that so yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry we couldn't take those questions yes over to you I, yes I, i was about to say that that i think this is not a webinar it should be continued as a web series so you know, we can have sessions of uh, swapnil or dr bali or even uh, kalam dani sir thank you so much thank you dr roshni thanks a special thanks to our speaker swapnil bhole and our panelists dr hirender bali and architect kiran kalamdani uh, thank you all for being there uh, thanks to all uh, the speakers mr ankit and uh, mr tarun for being here and also expressing your views uh, i would like to thank all the participants for being here today as i mentioned in the beginning we soon have our short term courses starting so please do register you can get more details on our social media platform in the name of iar the uh, the poster that is displayed to you on the screen we would like to thank all who are a part of our virtual family on instagram and facebook and are making us stronger with your support if you are not yet a part do follow our instagram and facebook page for further updates thanks uh thank you sneha and uh, before closing i just would like to add that there is dr jagdish sharma ji who has given us immense immense support he himself did not come on the panel but uh, he has been there on the background helping us with everything and also his sister uh, his uh, uh, relative from singapore who is an architect has also joined us so thank you everyone for being part of this okay. <coughs> thank you thank you thank you all thank you sir bye friends sir bye thank you bye roshni bye dr wali bye bye bye, -bye.